Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, and I am your host. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the role of a husband. I know I spent a lot of time speaking about what the wives should be doing, but I have so many wives that inbox me, email me, come to the store, just basically run me down and say, you telling us what we're supposed to be doing, but can you please make a video talking about what the husbands are supposed to be doing because I watch this content with my husband. So I know that if you make a video about it, he'll listen when you say it because if I say it, then he gonna say that I'm just saying it, okay? So we gonna get into it. I hope you all have been enjoying um, the whole Wife School series. I am about to take a break um, because the Parker household is doing a lot of transitioning right now. Um, with our children in school and getting back into the swing of in-person learning. So I'm going to take some time to get us situated. And, and that's what you should do um, as a wife if you know that the, the priority is needed in your family. Sometimes you have to pull away from other things. But as far as wife school is concerned, it will remain. The foundation has been laid. You can register. Um, but the basics are here. When you go into the wife's school and you actually um, register, it's a lot more in depth. This is just the basics, okay? So today we're gonna get into the role of a husband. Now, when I teach in wife school, the Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing, right? Which implies that when he found this woman, she was already a wife. But when he found this woman, he was just a man. The Bible does not say when a husband finds a wife, he finds a good thing. It says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. That lets me know that sometimes when men find their wives, they have not elevated to husband at this point in their life. And that is important. Because a lot of times we don't understand that we have to give people room to grow. All right. Follow me. There are certain things that, uh, certain characteristics of a husband. And I'm about to tell you. A husband is a pr protector. A husband is a provider. A husband is a prophet and he is a priest. And a lot of times people put a lot of emphasis on protecting and providing, but nobody ever speaks about the prophet and the priest. So I'm going to get into this today because I really need y'all to be able to get the full understanding of what a husband is. Now, let me say this because I am a biblical teacher, meaning that I teach because I'm a faith-based teacher. That does not mean that your husband has to go to church every Sunday, sit on the front row of the church in order for him to be these things. It simply means that he has to have a belief. And I'm not saying he has to believe in Jesus and this and that, the other meaning. He has to have some type of belief and understanding that he ain't doing it by himself. He has to have that, okay? And that is important because it's going to directly tie into his purpose. All right. Husbands, a lot of times, identify their purpose by what it is that they do. When men meet each other, a lot of times they greet each other with their name. And the first thing they ask each other is, say, man, what you do? And he might say, well, I'm a mechanic. I'm a truck driver. I'm an accountant. I'm this, I'm that, you know, whatever it is that he do. Because most men identify themselves by what they do. One thing that you will see is a lot of times when you run into men who don't have a thing that they do, meaning that they over here, they over here, they over there, they over there, and they literally trying to touch into everything, but they actually have no idea what their purpose is. Sometimes you will see that they are not in a good space mentally because they don't necessarily know what they put here for. See, when you understand your assignment, a lot of times you can get the job done a lot better. But when you walk in this earth and you really don't understand your assignment, a lot of times you live in your life in a kind of sense of chaos because you don't understand your assignment, okay? Now, I'm going to say this, and this has nothing to do with this, but 
If you, woman or man, don't understand your assignment, I recommend this book, The Purpose Driven Life. It came out about 20 years ago, a long time ago. But these type of books, this book will help you identify your purpose and what it is that you put here for. And they have recently come out with a little workbook to go along with it. But I want to put that source out there because I don't like to give information and not be able to give you a source to where to go get what you need to get. So put that on your Amazon cart, A Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. All right. Most times when men understand their purpose, they understand the assignment, right? Then they say, well, it's time for me to move forward in my life and start to build. That's the way men, that, that's the terminology that men use to say that I'm ready to take it to the next level. They say it's time for me to build. Okay, let's talk about building. He has to be a protector. Sometimes people only think about protector as in a sense of a burglar coming into the house, um, you know, keeping harm from coming to you in a physical way. Most times that's as far as protection goes for most people. But he has to understand he has to protect you from everything. Sometimes he even has to protect you from his family with them putting their mouth on you. Sometimes he has to stand up and say, hey, that's my wife. That's my woman. That's my girlfriend. That's the mother of my child. And you are not going to say this, that, the other about her. Not in my presence. Oh, yeah. He has to even protect you sometimes from his family. Sometimes he even got to protect you from your family. Some of us get in relationships and we have children that are teenagers and of age, right? And then sometimes they'll get out the way with us, right? And sometimes that man got to step in and say, hey, you're not going to talk to my wife like that. You're not going to talk to your mother like that. You're not going to do this to her because my job is to protect her from everything, even you. Even the child that she birthed into the world. Even you. He's your protector. See, a lot of times we only think about it from a sense of the outside. But he got to protect us from the inside too. Right? He is our provider. A lot of times people put a lot of emphasis on providing us with monetary things and materialistic things and houses and cars and things of comfort, but he also has to provide us with peace, meaning that he has to provide us with a peace of mind. And we can't have a peace of mind if you out there doing things that you're not supposed to be doing as my man or as my husband or as my boyfriend or as whatever role you're supposed to be in my life. We get that provision caught up into monetary only, but no, it's other things that you have to provide me with. And a peace of mind is one of them. And I can't have that peace of mind if I got to be worrying about what you're doing every time you leave out the door. Because I can't trust you or trust what you say. Okay? He is our priest. And people say, well, what do you mean until he's our priest? That means he is the spiritual leader of the family. That means that he understands the importance of morals and boundaries and he understands the importance of being able to go and pray for his own family. When he sees things are not going the way that they're supposed to go. He understands what it means to say, everybody get, on the, get up in here and let's join hands. And let's pray. Spiritual leader, he's the one that understands the importance of making sure that our children understand our God. Whatever God it is that you're serving. He got to make sure that they understand his faith. I don't care if he Muslim. I don't care if he Buddha. I don't care what it is that he believes in. He has an obligation to make sure that his family understands his belief system. Yeah. So that's what, what priests come in meaning spiritual leader. He's also the prophet. The prophet comes along when he understands his purpose. The prophet has the vision for the family, meaning that the prophet has already went to God for himself and God and gave him strategies and different ideas to be able to get things done for the family. 
And being that he didn't went to God and God didn't gave him the vision, he could come back and tell the, tell the vision to the family and say, this is what we are supposed to be doing. And this is the strategy. This is the way we're going to go about and get it done. If God just showed him that he's a homeowner and he said, well, wife, God just showed me that we're about to get us a house. This is what we need to be doing. We can't be charging. We can't go and get nothing else on our credit. We can't just go be buying this and that the other. We got to be good stewards of what God gives us and meaning that we got to save and we got to put things in place. And that means that we have to have a strategy to see this manifest, which is our house. Yeah, but that can't happen without the vision. And a lot of times he can't get the vision if he don't have a direct connection, a direct relationship with whoever he believe in. Okay? So, a lot of times we only focus on protector and provider. But I need you to understand that in relationships, we all have a role. When you are accepting a marriage proposal... You have to make sure that you're accepting it from a person that has certain type of qualities, certain type of characteristics. Keep in mind, when you met him, he was a man. But you have to know that this man is going to transform into a husband. If he's sleeping around and doing this and doing that before he becomes your husband, when he's just a man, more than likely when he becomes the husband, he's going to do the same thing until he decides he wants to grow. Can you handle that? See, these are the things that you have to know ahead of time because those type of things are going to mess with your peace. And a lot of times, if you watch my video yesterday on wholeness, you will see throughout the relationship, it's a lot of things that go on to disturb the peace of both people. Now, I have to say that. And then we decide we want to pick up the pieces and try to put it all back together and then repair. And trust me, my God can restore anything. But let me say this. Both people have to want to put in the work. Okay. When it comes down to this whole thing about marriage and husbands, just, and, and, and let me say this, just because you're a good woman, you could be the best. It does not mean that you will be guaranteed to get a man that is a good man. Just because you are a giving woman does not mean that the man that comes into your life is going to be a giving man. Just because you understand reverence and putting him first, it does not mean that the person that comes into your life have the same understanding. But you have to know what you can and can't deal with. You have to know what is most important to you and what ain't that important to you. And it's different from person to person to person. But what I will say is, if you go back and you look at that video on wholeness and you look at that cake and you saw how I was tearing that cake up, don't allow people to come into your life and tear you up just because they haven't grown. Don't allow that. Even if you got to take a step back and say, look, uh-uh, you go ahead and do what you got to do to grow, but you can't tear me up in the process. I can't allow that. I can't allow you to do that to me. Because the thing is, that's how we get all that resentment, bitterness. That's how all of that anger, all of that builds up inside of us because we don't know when to say, I can't let you do that to me. Yes, I want this. Yes, I want our marriage. Yes, I want our family, but I can't let you do that to me. Okay? So, that is going to conclude my video today about the role of a husband. This is Anal August. So, I am about to get ready to produce um, a video called Milk and the Prostate. It will be available for purchase for $19.99 on my website. And the reason why it is a video that is available for purchase is because I will actually be using actual dildos and all of this kind of stuff and it's not a video that i can put out on facebook or anything like that and it is an educational video just like how to squirt but if that is something that you're interested in learning i'm actually going to be teaching it because i've taught how to do anal i literally have taught everything of what it is to do to a woman's body but this is going to be my first video where i'm teaching 
what to do to a man anally, to stimulate him anally. Even though my husband is not open to anal play, I understand how the process goes, so I'm going to teach it, okay? You all be blessed. You all enjoy your day. Happy, happy Thursday.